What's up guys, my name is Fran, and once again, welcome back. And in today's video, I'm super excited. We're actually gonna be checking out one of my favorite pieces of tech, an external graphics box. But in particular, we're actually gonna be checking out the Akidio Node Lite. So what is an external graphics box or an eGPU? Well, nowadays when you pick up a modern graphics card, it generally is gonna come in a PCI Express flavor. Now this connector actually does get connected to the PCI Express slot on your motherboard. But thanks to modern science and Apple in partnership with Intel, they've introduced a revolutionary technology called Thunderbolt. Now Thunderbolt has come in three different iterations with each generation doubling the speed of the last. So Thunderbolt 1 actually offered up 10 gigabits per second, while Thunderbolt 2 offered up 20 gigabits per second, and Thunderbolt 3, which is the more modern connector, actually does offer up 40 gigabits per second. Now, while this isn't anywhere near the theoretical uh, speed limit of PCI Express 16X Gen 3, it definitely does come close enough to offer up some pretty great performance when it comes to a graphics card being attached to this connection. Technology like Thunderbolt 3 actually makes devices like the Akita Node Lite a possibility. Now, what is the Akita Node Lite anyway? Well, it's not an external graphics box. In fact, Akita specifically says, do not use this as an external graphics box. They actually sell other devices such as the Akita Node and the Akita Pro, but we're gonna go ahead and use it like that anyway. Okay, so it's actually been quite some time since I've done one of these eGPU tests, so I feel like it's only right that I go over my testing methodology. As far as the actual graphics card goes, I'm gonna be using a GTX 10. 50 mini. Now there's a number of reasons why I'm using this card. Number one, because it's a small card. And since the Akita Node Lite is not an actual eGPU box, it isn't going to fit a full-size card. And then number two, the 1050 does not require any external power because once again, the Akita Node Lite is not actually an external graphics box, so it doesn't have any six pin or eight pin connectors. Now as far as the rest of the hardware goes, I'm going to be using an ASRock Fatality. Z370 motherboard. Now this is going to be powered by an i7, 8700K, blah, blah, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, blah, blah, hard drive, blah, blah, power supply. You guys get the picture. Now the reason why I picked this motherboard is that it is one of two ITX motherboards out there in the market that I could find at least that has a native Thunderbolt 3 port. That means we don't have to plug in any adapters. All we really have to do is load up Windows, install our drivers, and we're good to go. Okay, so enough of me setting up the scenario. What were the results of the benchmarks? Well, starting off with the GTX 1050 attached directly to the motherboard, playing Overwatch, I was able to get about 100 FPS on average, seeing about a peak of 130 FPS. When I moved it over to the eGPU, we still saw about an 80 FPS average with some peaks around 110 to 117, which isn't that bad. Moving on to Tomb Raider, just running the benchmarks, we got an average of 47 FPS. And uh, when it comes to the eGPU on the 1050, we saw about 34 FPS. And finally, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Man, I really gotta buy some new games. These things are getting old. Uh, we saw an FPS of about 52 with the 1050 internal. And then with the uh, 1050 external, we saw about 44 FPS. In regards to these results, it seems like the performance gap between an external and an internal graphics card actually seems to be closing slightly. The last time I actually did a number of these tests, we saw more of a difference of about 30% between the two. But nowadays, it actually seems a little bit more towards 15 and sometimes 10% depending on the actual title. Now, I think this performance increase is due to a lot of attention being directed a little bit more towards the eGPU category. We've seen a number of other manufacturers come out with eGPU boxes. Uh, we've seen a number of uh, growing support Apple now natively supports it. By the way, I will be doing a video on a High Sierra and an external graphics card and that productivity performance, so don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss that. But when it does come to this exciting technology, man, I gotta say, what a time to be alive. Uh, we're definitely in a transitional phase between the way we more traditionally compute and the way we're gonna be doing things in the future, whether it's an eGPU or even some sort of cloud graphics processing, uh, things are definitely gonna change in the next couple of years. But when it does come to the Akidio Node Lite, I've gotta say at its 100 $99 price tag. This is definitely not the unit you want to buy when it comes to an eGPU. There are plenty of other players out there, but if you guys do have any questions about the Akita Node Lite or anything technical at all, do me a favor, leave them in the comment section below. Also write down there if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Once again, guys, my name is Fran. Thanks so much for checking out this video and I'll see you guys in my next one.